What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Spectators. I'm Brooklyn. I'm here with my boy, Drew. How you doing, bro? We're doing good, bro. We got we got another one of those great episodes for you guys mm-hmm. where we are joined with uh, one of our good buddies. He's helped us out a lot as we've gone on. Brooklyn, you want to introduce the man for me? Yeah, man. We It's dope to have him as our first guest of 2021, starting the year off right. I met him uh, early last year, and it's been love ever since, bro. So everybody, please welcome my boy to Shim Knight, Lotto T. Cinco. Welcome to the Spectators, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, my man. You know, Brooklyn and Drew, I appreciate y'all for having me on the show. Oh, man. Absolutely, bro. Uh, Doing pretty good, man. Got a lot of got a lot of good stuff going for me right now. As far as um, whether it's just the brand, the Five Nights, or whether it's the the music, uh, a ball, and everything like that. Just trying to, you know, gain and maintain. Make sure I do it the right way, so so nothing happened bad where you fall off. You feel me? So um, absolutely. Yeah, man. Just just been grinding, going in every day, nonstop. You feel me? Grind don't stop. Absolutely, brother. And. Uh, First thing right away, you, you allude to the brand Five Nights. Uh, we we introduced you to Shim Knight. Obviously, the name got something to do with it. But you want to explain uh, the brand, how it came about, and uh, the name in general too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, as you see, uh, Five Nights. Nice is my last name, but but the five people ask me uh, uh, the question all the time. You feel me? So it's like Lotto T Cinco. What does that mean to have to you? Uh, five Nights. What does that mean? The five, the five, the five. Everybody want to know why is it the five? Well, I'm gonna start off with that part. Um, the five and five nights is is come from when I was growing up, man. Uh, five years old, moms and pops they had split apart, so it was on some um some J Cole type stuff where it was like, cause you know that's that's my favorite artist from the, so that's where like a lot of the music come from. But um, and you can hear it as I, as I more develop into artists in my stages, cause I just been rapping a little over a year, but uh. It's, it's the five is significant because with them splitting apart and then it's like me becoming a man out of the household because mom got to pay the bills and stuff like that. So she working two to three jobs to where I might be home alone. I'm at elementary school, but shit, I still got to eat. So it's like, mm-hmm. I mean, making dinner for myself, learning how to cook, not just cereal ravioli, but I'm talking about dinners to where it's like, okay, cool. Like, rice uh green beans stuff like that to where it's like basically you growing up in this environment you on your own yeah mom dudes with you but she gotta she gotta pay the bills right now you gotta go to school so you're gonna have to feed yourself so five it just it just i feel that number uh really became significant to me because um growing up i was i was always wanting to be you know and lily one of the the kids who had the ball in the hand a quarterback running back and stuff but when you tell me and you're young, man, they got you on the line. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you don't want to be on yep. the line. Like, they put you man. right in the trenches. <laughs> yeah, right man. Right in the trenches. <laughs> and I'm like, Coach, man, let me get a ball one time. He's like, not nah. this Not this game. But we're going to get you <laughs> next week. You're blocking. You're blocking. <laughs> yeah, he's we're like. We're going to get you right next week. <laughs> exactly. You feel me? So it's like, it's like, man, uh, the, the five, the cinco, and the five nights just from me, five years old growing up, um, being being on my own technically like uh i would say finding my way through life because uh all the way until i want to say high school around that time probably like freshman year is when i was able to first get the number five uh to to represent me i had it in in basketball football and baseball because i played all three throughout high school but the thing was uh far as me with the five throughout high school i wanted that become okay cool people know me as five if they don't know my name because you know you could go to a player a, a, a game and you see a player you'd be like yo who is that kid you ain't gonna know his name but you're gonna know his number he number mm-hmm. five so and so number five number five where you at who is that like you get what i'm saying so as far as me getting recruited and everything like that i wanted them to know number five because first of all half of the people always mess up my name anyway so i, I like that i like to keep it <laughs> simple right like, yeah, yeah so that's that's where the five came from, and there's more to it than the music, but that's just something simple. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And so, um, so five nights. Uh, how did the brand kind of come about? Um, obviously the name kind of fell together and was pretty easy for you, but how did how did making a brand and then uh, finding your own lane in that brand kind of go about? Yeah, man. So um, finding the brand and um being in my own lane, like I, like I said, the five, it came from a significant place, but I would, I would say, um, 
it was always it's always been some like sort of a dream of mine to to have my own to own something you get what i'm saying because growing up in the system that we grew up in far as just america in general they teach you how to go out and get a nine to five a job to stay in the system and or if you when you go into high school when you're about to leave the first question they ask you they go would you like to go to college or would you like to join the army or like the, the forces you get them saying the armed forces like so mm-hmm. you have two choices so that's not for everybody nobody really want to go to the army sometimes nobody really want to go to college 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 is not for everybody you get what i'm saying so it's like exactly. okay so what can i do to show people this is a passion of mine and only thing you can do is start your own business you got to start something for you that you uh have a passion about that you pursue you feel me because like i said you could go go growing up oh i want to be a doctor i want to be a doctor you go to college you find out you got to be to school for eight years and you might not even get a good job where you like working mm-hmm. so you spent what 26 to 28 years of your life and you just getting a job as a doctor they start you off at the pay that you probably don't even want to be paid because you're like, I've been in school for so long. Eventually going to get there. But by the time that happens, you're like 40. So it's like, I want to have something on my own. Like I want to have a brand to where I could build up to where it's like, I can express myself and be like, yo, this is mine. Like I own this. You get what I'm saying? So that's where the five nights came from. Love it. Absolutely. And we, we get that all the, yeah. I mean, we're, that's pretty much what we're doing over here. Exactly. Um, so we, we definitely understand that. And um, you mentioned earlier about uh, getting number five in all your sports, right? In uh, football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, and you played all those in high school. Which of those were like something that you, I mean, obviously we talked a little bit before you're still playing baseball. And uh, I want to hear more about that. But like, which of those was always the one that you had? Like, that? which one was the dream? Which was the dream? Oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I always say, um, Definitely, man. Uh, Cause I, I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of close with my pops. You feel me? So it's like ain't, ain't no beef and no no diss in there. But it's like, um, definitely baseball. I would say baseball was a was the first love because I was four years old and he was coaching me on t-ball. <laughs> I'm talking about man, bro. Like I just fell in love with it because you know I got my pops coaching me. Like we was good, like good baseball team. You feel me? Like we was winning. It was t-ball, but with hey, a dub is a dub. Y'all balling. Yeah, <laughs> we ball. You get know, <laughs> having fun. Yeah, pizza after the games. So. Yup. And the orange yeah. slices during. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, man. I uh, baseball was definitely the um first love, and the reason I feel it was the first love is because like um. You don't you don't have it too many times where fathers are growing up in a household nowadays. So for that, uh, uh, me to share that significant moment with my pops of him coaching me, and uh, he played baseball growing up uh, here and there. He wasn't really like super athletic, and uh, my mom she played sports here and there, but she also wasn't super athletic. But the thing was with him, I'm like, okay, cool. I know I'm athletic, but like my pops did this. I want to play. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It turns out the situation how I how I grew up is like. The only way to get to college for me out of high school was for football. So it's like, okay, cool. If I know I could get a full ride out of this, I have to pursue it. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I went with football instead of baseball. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Definitely do. And yeah, I I, I relate to that too because I, I was trying to make something happen with football too. Then yeah. things didn't go that way, but you know, it didn't be happening. Yeah. But um. Yeah, good good love with sports. Definitely all power to you trying to make it in baseball. Definitely keep on working towards that. Another thing you're working on though, that music. <laughs> that yes, music, sir. boy. So yes. to tell us a little bit about that. How did that start? When did you really uh decide and really know that this is something you want to pursue just as heavily as sports? Oh man. Um Yo, with that, with that, that I feel that's probably the the deepest thing for me because, uh, yo, the music really came. Um, you know, I, I've been around music. Everybody's been around music for for their whole mm-hmm. lifetime. You know, since your baby, you like you you pick up you pick up rhythm. The Google Gaga playing people. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Like, people don't right. really, but if you think it too, it's like yeah. it's the rhythm thing, and then you playing like noises and stuff like that. But I think it really clicked with me when uh. I was I was in um in high school and like uh like I said J Cole was my favorite artist 
And the type of generation I live in is like, I'm trying to bring that same message with a, a Southern type hip hop flow type beat, trap beat or whatever they call them nowadays, you feel me? But uh, at the same time, I'm trying to be unique and be my own style. But um, I would say with the music, it probably, it probably clicked around that 2014 time when you had Forest Hills Drive and you had uh, Take Care by Drake and all that. So yep. man, that was, that was my freshman year of high school. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, this slide, like, I'm like, I'm listening to everything and everything like that. And I'm actually like listening to the lyrics because I love lyrics. And it's a lot of people nowadays who, who like beats and yeah, the beats be hard and everything like that. But if you ever, I be trying to tell people nowadays, if you ever take the beat away and just listen to what they say and see if you're going to bop your head the same. And they can never answer me or give me a straight answer. So it's like, if you, if you do that to cold music, it's like, bro, you can still feel what he's saying on a whole mm-hmm. other level. So I feel that's when it clicked with me freshman year of high school. But uh, it really got deeper when I couldn't play football anymore because I went to the neurologist and she told me she, uh, you know, neurologists can't tell you you can't play football anymore. So I was in college at Charleston Southern. She goes, uh, I had my mom right to the next uh, uh, left of me. She goes, I highly recommend you don't play football anymore. So my mom started, she started crying. I'm talking about balling. And I'm sitting there like, damn, like, what am I going to do? Because you, you, like I said, back to this whole system thing, you train for so long and you're doing something so long to where it's like when it gets taken away from you, you think, what am I going to do now? And it happens with so many people, not even just kids, uh, adults in general. You get what I'm saying? But it's like, it's not our fault. It's the system we grow in. Because everybody has more than one talent, but it's like mm-hmm. they tell you find what you find what you're good at. Even you might not be good at it, but you if you can sustain this, then do it your whole life until you get your 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 four hundred one k and then you retire and die. Nobody wants to live like that. You get what I'm saying? So the music after I had my own um, my got diagnosed with epilepsy and everything in South Carolina, like dude, I was I was down. That was the the worst time in my life I feel because I was I was so depressed. Like I said, I was I wanted to play football. I've been training so hard. I knew this house gonna go to college. My mom ain't have to pay. Now all of a sudden I can't play no more. So I mean, dude, music became therapy. And then uh when that started happening, people started listening to me and um they was like, yo, you good. And they start telling me that around three months, but I'm not really a big headed person, or nothing like that. So I'm like, I appreciate it, like appreciate the love. Then it was a couple months later, somebody had told me that was like, yo, like you you really can make something happen with this. And that was probably like I would say seven, seven months in. So I'm only 17 months in right now. I've only been rapping since uh what was it, November of um 2019, September, November 2019, something like that around that time. But uh Yo, this this last tape I dropped, I got a couple uh big time artists like Far's Famous Kid Brick, um, Project Youngin. Um, they've been telling me like keep going, keep pushing. Uh my homeboy Trey, um, who who does all the beats, Trey made this beat, he be doing beats for Dirk, Wave. Um, they told me keep going, man. So that's I, I really feel like I, I can I can do it, man. I believe it. Absolutely. And you gotta yeah. believe in yourself, you gotta bet on yourself. Yeah. That's the only way. And you got the talent. You you one of the rare uh, lyricists that I've been uh, able to come across. And we met like January 2020. And it's funny that you didn't start rapping until uh, 2019 in November. Right. And I remember you posting it and you were just like, hey, I'm just doing this as a hobby right now. And I was telling yeah. you back then, like, just keep on staying with it. Yeah. Keep on staying with that. it. Yeah, I do. Fact. So, so you talk about you got Famous Kid Break on uh, the next one. What are some other artists that uh, you wish that you could work with one day? Um, Definitely, definitely. Uh, my, my top three, like not, not to be on no cocky stuff or anything. Nah, go, like go ahead. But I, I feel I'm number one just because I believe in my craft and my artwork. But mm-hmm. as far as the three after that, uh, I have I have Cole, then I have uh, Skipper the Flipper, who used to be with Migos when they first started. And I have Rod. And the reason I have those those three is because Cole, he inspired me. Mm-hmm. And then Rod, I feel, is the one who I really would love to work with is because um he's from the city. Like, we both we both from here. Uh, I've seen him here and there growing up. 
and I know a lot of his homeboys, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want that handout. Like, the, yo, like, can you help me out? I want to get blow up off the, I want to make it and be like, yo, let's do a song. Let's collab. We both, we both made it, blah, 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 here and that. You get what I'm saying? Coming from that point of view, there's nothing wrong with asking for a handout here and there. I'm not saying that because sometimes you might need it. And, and if you keep your mouth closed, you might miss that opportunity. And I'd be telling people that. I'm like, look, like, if, for instance, with me, if my boys need something, I'd be like, yo, you need something, let me know. Because if you don't tell me, I can't know. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I, I feel the same way. And it's like right now, it's like with him, he he doing his thing. So when, when he gets to that point to where it's like it's not album mode and he just chilling, and of course, I might reach out and be like, yo, and I'm trying to do something. But as of right now, I got to focus on me and, and build me first to where I get to that level to where I'm like, okay, cool. <clears throat> now it's like. I got all my stuff ready. Let me go out here and, and get the people who I want to be on my stuff. So uh, as of right now, though, I would say Rod definitely, definitely number one, because like, I really feel where he be coming from and the stuff he's saying, I've seen it like growing, growing up around, we grew up in the same city. So the stuff he's talking about, the people he's naming, I know the people who he's talking about and the people he's naming, you get what I'm saying? So I know it's like, there's no rap, there's no cap in his rap. So that's definitely definitely uh number one and of course Cole, but he like a meal right now for a pizza, so you gonna have to wait. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely them. I know uh famous famous um he hit me up. His favorite song he actually told me was fresh in. He said he wanted to do something with me like that. So I'm uh I- I'm definitely excited for that. I'm uh, I'm gonna definitely have him on jackpot three. A lot of people don't don't know about Jack Bar Three. I haven't actually. This is my first time actually even talking about it. But um, I'm, exclusive. I'm gonna, the exclusive. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it. Uh, it's either gonna be in um December or January. Most likely, I'm banking on January only because I want to fresh start off the fresh year, and then I got a uh, tape coming off when football season start back up, probably around like September October, and it's called uh, Lotto T University. So it's going to be like straight college bangers because it's like okay. the reason I feel I'm a unique artist is because I grew up in, in an environment where it's like, yeah, you seen Glock roped off and you seen people who you seen yesterday, but he's not here today. Like that's real life stuff. Mm-hmm. But then I transferred to, to private school to play ball to get out of that environment because my mom seen I was starting to go down the wrong path. And it's like, whoa, this is the other side of the it's game. It's a whole different world. <laughs> whole different, whole different world. world bro and, and this is the thing with people how they say the grass not green on the other side and people don't believe it all it is is they have money man that's all it is it's the same stuff man. It's the same exact things just they have money yeah. they know they know the value of money they know how to use it they know what to put their money into how to make revenue while they sleep and mm-hmm. that's the thing the other side don't know now the other side they get money too they just don't know what to do with it that's why they buy things that are useless you get what i'm saying but it's not yeah. wrong that because they wasn't they wasn't taught how they were taught exactly so it's, it's their environment that you're brought up in exactly. and it's tough because you're a product of wherever you're just put into it's not your fault and i and i agree with that you feel me that's why i feel like if if i find a way to not if but when i find a way to get everything from what i grew up to to what i've seen these past couple years of my life and mix it together and throw it out with some hot beats like Yo, it, nobody, nobody's doing that. You get what I'm saying? It's all, it's all trap stuff and stuff like that. Which, that's what they grew up in. So I, I like it too. Cause if you're speaking about something that's real, I'ma listen to it. But don't mm-hmm. be coming out here with no, no stuff you ain't doing in real life. And what's happening yep. you be doing? I don't like that. Yep. So you mentioned college bangers. Um, oh, yeah. that 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 piques my interest a little bit because yep. I went to the University of Oregon, right? And uh, it's not not a it's a pretty decently big like party school, but like that aside, like I I got kind of immersed in like that type of music. Uh, what are like the two inspirations towards that tape? Because that's not going to be a J Cole inspired tape. Oh no no no! You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like who, who's inspiring that? Yeah, I, um, like I said, I feel like I'm feeling real versatile, but um, bro, I ain't even go capture. I listen to all type of music just because I feel mm-hmm. like whatever you have a passion in, you have to be a, a student of the game. Mm-hmm. So like bro i'd be listening to like kenny chesney like on some country stuff sometimes just like just to just to feel a vibe to be like yeah. okay where, where's he coming because they tell stories too 
that yeah. might not be your your type of tune you want to listen to, but you gotta you gotta grow. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I feel as far as the, the the party vibe though, bro. Like Wiz Khalifa, bro. Mac Miller. Juice, juice a little bit. I'm juice growing on me, but bro, like Wiz Khalifa and uh, just the bro, how he first came out. Cause a lot of people mm-hmm. don't know about paper planes. They don't no. know about the old Wiz. You get what I'm saying? Like that's my Wiz. When he when he dropped all that old stuff, like the new stuff, rolling papers and stuff. That's dope too. Don't don't get me wrong, but the that OG old, Wiz at flight school, bro. <laughs> yeah, and then. Yep. And then it's like, Man, it's it's so many other people though. Far as far as college, like uh, college bangers, it's like um, I went to when I was up in school playing football. We uh, we obviously had parties and stuff after football games, but they would always we would always be listening to like the same stuff. I felt here and there, like yeah, we might have a different person on the ops, but they all got the same songs. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't really like turn up, drink. Uh, party music. It was more like we was playing Money Bag, Black Youngster, something like that. Which it's gonna get you crunk, but it ain't like it ain't talking about like the party environment that you're in right yeah, now. Yeah, it, you know it's not mean? putting you in the mode like the the beats are and like that yeah. everything around you is, but the music's not so much. I got you. Right, like, and that's what I feel like. Some of my lyrics, uh, for instance, on on House Party, I got on on my Jackpot too. I like hit my boy up. Hey, what's the move? Let's get it popping. Big mm-hmm. girl, white claw, Henny, Malibu, and vodka, something like that. Just that, like bar alone, it's telling you like, oh shit, like this a party. Like you get know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. When you go to a party nowadays, it's like it's drinks everywhere. You got red solo cups. You got loud. You don't even gotta see the loud. You are gonna smell it. Yep, <laughs> it's gonna smack <laughs> you right in the face. It's gonna smack you right in the before you even hit it. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you're at the right place for yeah. The door. yeah you get what i'm saying like when i was in college coming in from from high school is like i was used to seeing certain things because like i said uh i went to a private high school they might think oh everything's you know just just it's okay over there it's, it's fine nah bro i seen some stuff i thought i would never see as like in high school bro i seen more over there than i did when i was on the south side like bro I I went to parties. I seen like, <laughs> twins snorting coke off titties. Like I'm like, bro, what? I'm like, bro, what's in high school, bro. I'm like a junior in high school and all this stuff. And it's like I got used to it. I got a norm. Like I didn't have to change myself and do it with them. But it's like I see this. And then when I went mm-hmm. to college, it was ten times amplified. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So it's like they need music to go with this. You get what yeah. I'm saying? So I was like, man, just me being in college. I feel like. That in, that inspired me. So, um, and the one dude I can't think of his name right now. He had a real good college, a real good college song. Um, is it is it Seth or something like? I can't remember. But he's like, I love college. Asher Roth. Asher Roth. <laughs> Asher Roth. <laughs> yeah. And gonna be in my head sometimes just playing. I'm like, like, bro, people love that song. I'm like, I even like that song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know, so like, you'd be confused why you like it, but both. <laughs> and the thing is, it's so, it's so many different ethnicities and and outlets to reach, to reach different colleges. It's so many different colleges. You get what I'm saying? If yep. I've been in that situation, I know how to relate to them. Why not put music for them? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I got boys in Tally right now. All they talk about is why bombs. I'm like, I don't even know what a why bomb is. And then they show me <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, bet. I'm going to make a song about why bomb because now I know what it is. Yeah. It's just stuff like that. You got to relate to people. That's what music is about. Yes, sir. And the fact that you're young and you're willing to have variety in your music, listen to different stuff, it's gonna, only going to help you down the road as an artist. Yeah. Because you want to be versatile. You don't want to yeah. stay in the same lane. You want to be able to, to do some random genre that people going to be like, what are you doing that? And then it ends up slapping, and then people go, all right, cool. <laughs> and and I, I really agree with that because um, some people, they actually tell me, um, told me before, they was like, yo, you got you to gotta pick your lane. You got you to gotta find your fans. You got to stay and drive. And I was like, I agree with it at first to a certain extent. But then I was like, but the, the number one artist out here, he's in every lane and got hits and platinums and everything, which is Drake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Drake got a song in Spanish. I don't even know a word to it, but it hit. Everybody. I don't think Drake know a word to it either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
why do I have to stay in one lane and he's nah. making millions being versatile? Yeah, like, I've, I've never agreed with the stay in your lane. You should want to be able to get out of your lane and try different things because exactly. that's what life's about, trying different things and seeing what you could make happen. Yeah, bro. You don't, you don't want to be put into a single file line and just stay straight, eyes forward, not looking at the scenery, none. Right, so, right. So when are we getting the Lotto Spanish album is what I just heard. <laughs> that's you you got to drop it if your name Lotto T. Cinco. That's, that is true. That's what I just yeah, heard. I, I'm, I'm going to be working on the Spanish when I'm down in Miami. But, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> right now, if I if I do an album right now in Spanish, it's going to be uh, 10 seconds long. <laughs> it's going to be an old We got to start looping. We got to start looping. <laughs> exactly. This is going to be a whole bunch of albums. Hola. <laughs> Speaking uh, of albums, though, and you mentioned Jackpot 3, th yeah. this one's going to be a tough question to answer. But you got Jackpot, you got Jackpot 2, you got Trenches to the Top, and you got your new one, your solo tape, Humble Hustle Hungry. Yes, sir. Which one do you think is your favorite, like, complete body of work? Favorite complete body of work? So far. Um, I would, I would, uh, I said that is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to look at your own stuff and like figure mm -hmm. out what's the best. Oh, man. Um, I would actually say uh far as far as from from complete when I say like bangers far as you get a you get a, a, a perspective of my life too, I would say humble hustle hungry only because that's the reason I did it is all solo for a reason because mm -hmm. Each song has a meaning in there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That part two, don't get me wrong. Like I feel that one hits harder because it's more, it's more like bangers on there. As far as nowadays, like I said, my generation they listen to beats. You get what I'm saying? And there's more yeah. songs on there. I only had ten on Humble Hustle Hungry. Uh, Jack, Jack part two, I think I had thirteen or fourteen. So it's like, I mean, you gonna get a little bit more trap beats and a little bit more artists coming from different different areas you get what i'm saying and i featured a couple people so i mean i i would say humble hustle hungry because um bruh so from from number one all the way to number 10 like like hungry flow to keep it real like if you listen to that whole tape hungry flow i'm telling you like like bruh this is this is this is i'm hungry you get what i'm saying and then mm -hmm. The, if you look at the tape, you'll even see uh, a person at the top of the tape on a uh, cover art is number six, which is my, that's my blood cousin, uh, Tony, Tony Jones, who played for the uh, Saints. So it's like, bruh, he's my brother. Like, he was the one when I was going through all my stuff at uh, South Carolina at Charleston Southern. He was the one who called me first. Yo, what's going on? You straight? Like, like tell me, tell me what's going on while, while all this happening. He checked up on me, like. Yeah. You say you got friends, you say you got people who there for you until something hit the fan, you're gonna see who really there for you. That's facts. Right. The reason like that gave me goosebumps right now, just talking about it, is because like he didn't have to do that. He's a he was the featured running back at Notre Dame. They was playing, they was about to go to the playoffs to play Clemson in the championship. And then uh it was like he he had his life like why does he have to hit me up, even though we cousins, like you don't have to hit me up. You get what I'm saying? But for him to do that, it showed like, like, dang, I, I really do got people who care about me. Like, I can't just sit here and be be depressed. Like, I got to get up and go out here and make some shape. You get what I'm saying? And so I had a song called Make Some Shape. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the verses in that song was probably, probably like, I would say definitely one of my favorite verses in that whole, uh, whole song that people probably don't even catch because they listen to the beat. Is on um, when I was like, you the playing playing on the uh ball on the court, uh, you, and your time not looking good. Like the reason I said that is because like, ask for guidance, go ask for guidance, bro. My nigga, God gonna steer you right. And it's like, bro, when you're in college, there is a people don't know. Yeah, it's a eleven dudes on a football team, but you got like a hundred and twenty dudes on the roster. Mm -hmm. Bro, coming as a freshman, nine times out of ten, you're not gonna play. And when you going through that and you trying to adjust to school, you obviously see new new females you never seen before. You in a whole different state. You trying to juggle all this together, like bro, that that it deteriorates your focus because 
for me, girls always been my number one distraction. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like I ain't never really have to like get into the whole whole drinking and smoking only because like I always felt like I'm me. You feel me? That, that ain't what I do. And I ain't yeah. never try to fit in. Like if people like me, they like me. If you don't like me, then I mean I'm not changing. Uh, it is what it is. Exactly. And it's like that I felt that was a bit distraction. So so with me um going to school and going through all that, it was like Oh man, this is a lot. And and with that, that that song is telling people like, yo, this is real. But like I said, some people listen to the beats. Hopefully they listen to it so much that when they memorize the words, they're like, oh snap. Like they don't even realize what they heard. <laughs> yeah, I said, and I and one of the parts I said, six o'clock weighs down. Is this shit really for me? When you wake up, I guarantee you ask any athlete, they go to college and they playing ball. No matter if it's a boy or girl, when you got them 6 a.m. weights or 5 a.m. weights, you wake up in the morning probably four to five minutes before you got to be in the weight room. <laughs> bro, you sit on the edge of the bed, bro. <laughs> you know how many times I sit on the edge of the bed like this? Yeah. Like, do I want to go home? Like, I don't think this for me no more. <laughs> That's exactly what I summed it up. Yeah. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's not, the street's not made for everybody. College ball not made for everybody. High school ball. Everybody has something that they can that they can do, but the thing is, like I said, back to the system. When you listen to somebody, you just stick to it. You gonna be, oh, I'm gonna do this the rest of my life, and then I don't know what else. So it's like, bro, it's so deep, bro. Everything I have has a meaning to it. But yeah, man, that tape I feel is my most complete. I like it. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to kind of look back at your stuff and like figure out what how things are important to you like like you obviously did with like those songs and like that tape as a whole and um i think that's a really good way to like make music or make any sort of art where you're like all right this is going to be a project that this is kind of the the direction it's going to go in this is how i want it to sound like or how i want people to listen to it and i think as a musician like that's just something really important that you understand that you're doing an entire project with a, with a purpose behind it. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's cool to see you only a, a little over a year into your musical uh, career, kind of understanding that already. That's, that's really cool to see. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that speaks a lot to the potential that you got. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. I'll I just be trying to tell people, man, cause I know I got a couple boys and like, they get in there just freestyling and everything. And, and it's like, yeah, that's cool. But at the same time, it's like, bro, you you spending your money on these sessions. So technically, you're wasting your money if you're not taking it serious. Like, this is your craft. Like, for me, if I'm going to do something, I'm going all in. I don't care what it is. You get what I'm saying? Like, even if I'm playing a pickup game, I don't like losing. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just me. No facts. And, and you get what I'm saying? But everybody not built like that. You feel me? So it's like, I got homeboys who who are just hopping out there, just start rapping, be like, yo, like, uh, nah, 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 be like, I like that. Punch me in. I'm like, you like that, like, but that's that's what they like. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to make something to where it's like people can nod their head too, but at the same time, they're gonna feel it. They gonna feel it. Like, feel me, you feel me? Like, and, and the thing is with me being at all different types and phases of the, uh, of life so far, and I'm still young. I can connect to everybody. Yeah. So I'm like, why not do that? And that just breeds longevity in the game. Cause yeah. you could you could put out a banger, it sounds good. It don't really got no substance to it. Cool. People gonna rock with it, it's gonna fade away. Right. But if you if the people could really feel you and you consistently put in something that people gonna feel day in and day out, that's just gonna keep on riding and riding. Yeah. I feel that. That's exactly how I feel, bro. Yeah. I figure. So before we get out of here, um, one thing we're probably going to start doing, I want to know what's your favorite sports moment that you've ever had, whether it's you, whether it's that you saw, whether it's something that you were at, like a game was like that first thing that came to mind, you smile. So, you know, something first thing that came to your mind, <laughs> that, that ball already ready rolling. <laughs> Favorites, I got a couple. That's why I started out. Oh, hey, hey just say as many as you got. <laughs> 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 um man i got a couple uh i would i would definitely say um my favorite my favorite sports moment i was a freshman at, at high school um 
We were. I went to the. I went to the. Uh, the Bucks. The Bucks Stadium. And uh, they had. Uh, it was. It was the Ring of Honor for. I want to say it was. It was Derrick Brooks at the time. It was either Derrick Brooks. I don't think it was for 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 my coach because I think he got his later in the year. But I think it was my freshman year, Derrick Brooks. And um, I was I was up in the booth at the Bucks game. And uh, they do the they do the halftime they do the halftime show and that's when they bring all the old players and, and legends out there. So obviously I knew I was gonna see them at a distance uh, on the field and everything because my coach had to go down and everything like that. But uh, right around right before halftime we leave the uh, booth or whatever and we go downstairs and I'm like oh snap like I might get to meet them. But we start walking a different way. I'm like, nah, I don't think that's gonna happen. And <laughs> so we get downstairs, but the way we took was a back way, obviously. So I'm like, oh snap, mm-hmm. we is gonna meet them. We go through a little tunnel, and then out of nowhere, like I see a bunch of players, like not even just players from the from the Bucks. It was some players who I could I could hardly even recognize. But you know, like they got a lot of respect to be in the Bucks facility and they're not a Bucks player and they retire. You get what I'm saying? So uh, I, I've seen the players from the Bucks when they had that Super Bowl team, they had Rondé. My favorite was John Lynch. I love John Lynch. Uh, Derrick Bucks. The reason I say Derrick Bucks is not my favorite only because like he, I love Derrick Bucks. Now he cool, but he was my coach too. So it was like, I seen him all the time. So like, you my coach, so uh, I ain't never met John Lynch, but but yeah, so um, and you was out there making me run, so we, we yeah. got a little beat. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't forget, <laughs> I didn't forget. Yeah, though. but <laughs> shout out to Coach Bucks too, though, man. I know he's gonna watch it. That's what that's my that's my guy, man. His uh, son, by the way, balling at Florida State, the K line, shout out to him too, because um, I keep in contact with them, but uh, yeah, that that moment right there was real significant because me as a freshman, I'm coming out of middle school, I was a buck 80 and um I, I was like I want to see a toothpick but I didn't have no muscle or nothing on me like that you feel me so just to see them and like for them to tell me like you can do it like keep going like there's a whole bunch of bu- bucks ring of honor legends right here we had uh, uh we had uh Jerry Watch we had like I said Derek Brooks John Lynch um Ronde Barber uh Reed Reedell Anthony um, what was the quarterback? Uh, from that team, yeah, Brad, was it Brad Johnson? Brad, John, Brad Johnson, he was there, and um, I got that, I got to see all of these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, they actually Warren Sat was there too, but he that's another story, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um shout out Warren, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but man, I just felt that was dope just because of like. You know how it is, man. Gr- growing up, just, just as as a as a man in America, even even a black male, like they they only tell you like, yo, you gonna thrive in, in, in sports and everything like that. But which is what they told me. But at the same time, they was like, you can do a lot more. Don't let just this game define you. And I'm like, dang, like you get what I'm saying? That for them to be telling me that, and they play the game, they're Ring of Honor Hall of Famers, but still they're doing more for their communities. I'm like, like, damn, bro, that, that kind of hit me. You feel what I'm saying? So uh I feel that's that's definitely one of the at least top five moments. Cause I got a, I got a couple, but man, that was that was real special for me, man. Yeah, cool. and, and and you say you were young, so that's that's definitely one of those football moments that you're like, man, I kinda wanna I wanna be in this situation when yeah. I'm older kind of thing, right? Yeah, man. Especially the chili is right there too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He did mention the distractions. Oh, sir. He mentioned he didn't even care about the ring of honor ceremony. He said, "I'm sick and tired of seeing because like, what they doing over there." What's he doing over there? <laughs> oh, so I got one more for you. What's up? What's one thing you want to accomplish? Not from yourself, but for Five Nights as a brand, as a company all that what's one thing you want that to accomplish within next 5 10 15 20 years one big thing yeah definitely uh and i actually been i'll be cuz i'll be writing down in my book and, and plans mm-hmm. for the set and dates and everything like that but uh i actually have a um 
it was it's um the the five year mark from from like February because on February 9th, which is which is my birthday, I'm dropping the official uh website. The reason I had to, it kept prolonging, prolonging was because of a couple of health issues and everything like that. But I'm I'm great now. Like we we Gucci, we finna get it going. So dropping that February 9th, and and five years from from there, I want to have my own uh store. So I've been I've actually been um researching as far as like stocks um business like what what laws do i need to make sure that are required for me to run this the right way you know what i'm saying so um i'm trying to actually have a little store department here to where it's like i don't just have to do everything myself i can have people people working for me i have like i said that that revenue of passive income and everything like that because a lot of people who don't know me that might just oh he's a rapper or something but as you could tell, bro, I'm I'm more intellect than just a rapper. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's the way I feel. Far as my business is going, it's going to tie into everything. But at the end of the day, if people don't know your story and know your background and don't buy into what you're selling, none of it matters. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So, like I said, five years from now, I want to have my own like uh, store factory or whatever like that but i'm trying to reach everybody if, if that makes sense and i'm not yep. just saying the 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 five nights as a as a brand because i know that's what you're asking just as a brand but eventually what i want everything to do is is tie in to where it's like oh you know lotto t cinco and they'd be like yeah that's shim isn't it and i'd be like and they'd be like yeah they'd be like, oh yeah he got he got music he playing ball right now for such and such. And you know, he got a store over there on, on such and such, right? By where he grew up or whatever. You get what I'm saying? Something like that. So it's like kids, because when kids see that and younger younger kids, bro, they believe. Because mm-hmm. it happened to me. When I seen people who I looked up to, and they told me you could do it, bro, that's like so much more motivation. You get what I'm saying? It just make you want to do it right at that moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Yeah, man, I got, I got, a, I got a plan and everything like that, and and you have to have a plan. That's 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 what I think about it because I I didn't really know what I was doing until I got better with time management and uh, communication. Because when I first went to college, that is the the number one thing. If you don't know how to manage your time, you're gonna get your butt kicked in college. Oh yeah, you you sol you sol already <laughs> from the jump because time waits for no man, and everybody know that. But nobody seemed to soak it in. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. So if everybody know that. Then don't you think everybody should be pursuing whatever their passion is, like like it's no tomorrow? But yet you got people sitting down. Oh, I'm gonna chill today, man. I'll do it tomorrow. That's not the mindset you can have going to these businesses, bro. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. But thank you, man, for coming on. I we appreciate you appreciate and everything you've time. done for us so far. We appreciate you sitting down, taking your time with us. Uh, we know you're a busy guy as, as you pretty much said all episode. <laughs> um, so we, we appreciate that a lot. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug real quick before we head up out of here? Um, nah, I just, I just really want to say, uh, thank you to y'all too, man. Like I, I appreciate y'all because like, really y'all don't know how much y'all inspired me. You feel me? Like I, I knew more, I want to say more about you, but I knew about you before you probably knew because Brooklyn told me about you, you get what I'm saying? And for y'all to, to have the show and to, and to keep it going, you get what I'm saying? We all going to start off small, but we just got to believe in ourselves, you feel me? So, like, y'all inspired me, you get what I'm saying? So, I just want to say thank y'all for real, for real, both of y'all. Absolutely. And um, shout out to, to, to everybody who, who does believe in me, even if they don't believe in me. I appreciate them because they don't want to even keep me going harder. So, um, and most of all, thank God, because if it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here, you feel me? Thanks. And, uh, it's it, it's 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 a rough life with with a lot of bumps in the road, but only only the strong will survive it. You feel me? So we got to keep fighting how we is with our with our small businesses, and they gonna blow up, man. Absolutely. Every, nice. Everybody, go on Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff. Go check out Lotto T Cinco. He got his newest uh, or newest tape that he was talking about earlier. Humble hustle, hu- hungry. Go check that out. Everything else before, if you're interested, go give him a follow. All that good stuff. Oh, yes, plug your IG and Twitter. Yes, sir. Oh, IG, we got me at uh, Five Nights ENT. So 
It'll be F I B E K N I G H T S Five Nights. And uh Twitter is Lotto T Single, L O T T O C I N C O. Absolutely. Go show them some love. Thank you guys for listening and watching. As always, we're the spectators. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.